Hey, new patient group nation. Welcome inside the broadcast booth. Brian right here riding solo today and welcome to season two, episode number 15. We're going to be taking another tidbit of our time efficiency strategies of billionaires today. And I'm going to teach you a course called the seven steps to achieving prosperity. This is something I've used with business executives, fortune 500 executives all over the world, as well as quote unquote, lower level employees and management with smaller companies and really everywhere in between. Really a great course in ensuring that your personal life aligns with your business life and vice versa because both affect either positively or negatively each other, such as if you're having issues maybe with your spouse in your personal life, it's inevitably going to affect the way you function at work, whatever that work might be. It also works the other way around. If you're having financial issues at work or you're just having a lot of stress for whatever reason with your business, it is likely to affect you in your personal life, whether that be how you treat your spouse, how you treat your kids, maybe both, you get the point. So we find it very important as new patient group, as a company, to make sure our clients and even all the clients that are non-clients that listen out there, just our avid podcast listeners, to make sure that you are aligned properly in your personal life and your business life work in harmony together. This is what this course today, the seven steps to achieving prosperity is going to be. It's a high level course. It's going to, we're going to take it one step at a time. I'm going to give you proper direction on how to get through this course because it's not easy. And we've seen the results to clients out there listening that have gone through this course before, you know, the fabulous results it's provided you for you guys. It's going to be a great repetition today, uh, listening to it because you know how we teach how important repetition is. So I want you guys to stay tuned and go through this course again and listen to me articulate it, even though you might've already gone through it for avid podcast listeners out there who are not our clients. Uh, this course is going to give you a high level overview to where you still can go back and go through it. And we're going to give away a couple things today. That allows you, if you get stuck while going through this course, you'll be able to reach out to us and we'll be able to help you through it. Important course. I think you guys are really going to enjoy the seven steps to achieving prosperity today. Before we get started, let's fire up the music. Welcome to the New Patient Group Podcast, where doctors and other healthcare professionals crush their competition with innovative business, marketing, psychology, and entrepreneurial strategies. Learn how to better the patient experience improve employee and management performance, and how to best increase conversions, efficiencies, referrals, profitability, revenue, and more. Learn from five-star customer service, psychology, business, and marketing gurus, top producing clinicians, and the most successful entrepreneurs throughout a multitude of industries. Now your hosts, practicing doctor and president of OfficeAutomated.com, Robert Barton, and the CEO of New Patient Group, consultant and speaker for Align Technology, the makers of Invisalign, author for the Benson Koppel Resource, featured in the Dental Economics Ask the Expert section, and international five-star customer service guru and life coach, with companies featured in Forbes, CNBC, and the National Journal, Brian Wright. Hey, everybody out there. Welcome inside the broadcast booth. Appreciate you joining us today. The seven steps to achieving prosperity. If it's the first time you've tuned into our podcast out there, uh, you're in for a real treat. Uh, because of the things we talk about on here are a lot different than what you've probably heard other healthcare consultants talk about. For those of you that are our clients or are, are avid listeners to the podcast, this is going to be something that really enhances uh, your thought process on how you get the most out of yourself, how you get the most out of your business, and how each really intertwines to maximizing your success and your joyfulness in life. Now, some of the talking points we're going to be going through today is again, for those of you who are avid listeners, it's being different than the 99 percenters out there. What I talk about often uh, when I speak or on this podcast, for those that are relatively new to the podcast, or maybe this is your first time listening, is the things that the top one percenters do, whether that be the top one percenters in life or the top one percenters as far as business goes, and I'm referencing outside of healthcare they pretty much run their business and their lives very similarly. There's not a lot of differences. There's a very specific game plan on how to generate and have your business become famous. Now, those things are not done by the vast majority of people because it takes work. There is no magic pill that goes, here you go. Uh, this postcard is going to grow you and make you famous. It takes work both with yourself and your business internally and also digitally. It's why as New Patient Group, we handle your digital and your internal. We combine them together to help you become famous. Now, the other one is that we're going to talk about today is defining your why. Now, this topic has almost become an annoyance to me because it's thrown around there by 
by every person uh, pretty much on the planet. You've got to know your why. You've got to talk about your why. You've got to, this is the reason why you've got to know your why. But most people, that's where it ends. All right, so we're going to dive into one, how you define your why, but then it's going to go beyond where I think a lot of people fail with the why is you've got your why, now what? And that's what the seven steps to achieving prosperity discusses is you've got your why. It teaches you how to get your why, but then it goes much more in depth on how to apply your why uh, to both your personal and your business life. Now, of course, I don't want you to quit your job, but we have had some people go through this course and they say, you know what? I realize I don't want to be a dentist. I don't want to be an orthodontist. I don't want to be a plastic surgeon. Uh, I don't want to be a restaurant owner. I don't want blah, blah, blah. I finally realized in life what I actually should be doing. Now, the likelihood of that being you and you quitting your job is, is obviously minimal. But I bring it up because I want to show you how powerful this seven steps to achieving prosperity is. Now, as fairness to our clients, you guys actually have this PowerPoint. You actually are going to get taught very in depth how to go through it. For those of you who are avid podcast listeners or somebody that's just tuning in, what we're going to go through today is more of a high level of each step. Okay, That way you at least have the knowledge to go back and at least go through this process. It's not necessarily something that you can do overnight. All right, I'm going to kind of give you a step-by-step approach. And before you need to go to the next step, you have to accomplish uh, the previous step in order to get the most out of this. Now, defining your passion is something else. That is a very key indicator that once you've defined your why, you need to define your passion. All right. Defining your goals like the top 1% is going to be another discussion point. I'm walking you through the steps right now, and then we're going to dive in. Then defining your goals. What are your goals in life? All right. Now you want to define your goals based on how the top 1% defines their goals. That's why that comes after what we're going to talk about, the differences between how the top 1% defines their goals versus the 99%. Then you're going to define your action plan. How do you have a plan in place written down that is actually going to help you achieve the goals, get the most out of your passions that all align with your why? Then we're going to talk about defining your crowd. This one to me, other than the last one, is the most important. And we'll get into the reasons why. And then the last one, and you hear me talk about this all the time, one of the biggest differences between the most successful versus the least successful, or even if you're successful but not reaching the point that you otherwise could, is implementation without procrastination. If you take your team to an event, or you hire a consultant, or you're working out, or whatever it might be, because your goal is to lose weight in that case, whatever it might be, the ones who succeed implement things right away. You get eight ideas that you like at an event, next morning, they should be implemented into your practice, into your business. Don't wait. And that is a real problem with healthcare professionals. Even in our sales process as a company, I have no problem letting you guys know this, is that the sales process with new patient group is long because doctors are notorious that own their own business. They're notorious for procrastinating, implementing things. Uh, They think that they have to talk to 30 people before they make a decision. They call the person down the street and they say, hey, what are you doing to grow your business? Rarely are they the type business owner or are you the type business owner that says, you know what? I don't care what the guy down the street's doing. I don't care what the 30 doctors over there are doing. I'm doing it my own way and it's going to be innovative. It's going to be unique. And I'm the CEO of my organization and I'm going to be the visionary. Rarely does that happen in healthcare. So the, the, the reality of the situation is, is it takes a sales process to bring aboard a new client, uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven touch points instead of them going, you know what? This sounds good. I'm going to make my own decision. So it also re- relates to how you guys, when you get back from events, study clubs, things like that. It's how you implement is that you wait. You try to find the perfect time to do it. You try to perfect it before it becomes protocol. And all of that is the opposite of what the top one percenters as far as entrepreneurs go. Entrepreneurs, Shark Tank people, I love using that example because people can familiar size, they understand what Shark Tank is. They get an idea, it's implemented the next morning. Now, you may royally mess it up. It may be a real problem. It may domino effect and create 20 other problems for your organization, but that's the only way you actually perfect it. The problems are a good thing. I relate it to like rarely does a plane crash, but when it does, 
Uh, you can look at it as a positive because they go, they analyze it, they find the reasons why it crashed, they fix it, and then it's not an issue or rarely is it ever an issue in a plane crash again. No different than this. It's going to implement, when you implement it and you implement it fast, it's going to cause problems. But therefore, you view the problems, you correct the problems, you improve over time. Eventually, it becomes part of your way of life a methodology and you succeed. So let's go ahead and dive in. The first one is defining your why. Now everybody or probably everybody out there listening, you've heard of people talk about the importance of your why before. All right. You've probably also, if you went to business school out there, because again, for if this is your first time listening, we do have a lot of entrepreneurs that listen to this podcast that are outside of healthcare that own different companies. So one of the things you're taught in business school, and it's another example of how what business school teaches uh, is, is not what you need when you actually open up your own company is people talk about you need a mission statement and you need a business plan and you need a blah, 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 blah. You don't need any of it because the reality of the situation is once you open up your own business, you, you can throw it all out the window. All right. What you need, and I'm reiterating what you probably already know, is you need a why. Here's the issue with the why. One, like I talked about, it's a thrown around term that's used left and right by every Tom, Harry, and Joe on the planet now. But they don't really teach you, one, how to find your why. And once you have your why, they don't really teach you what to actually do with it. Now, one of the first things I want you to do in order to find your why is an exercise. All right. And this is why each one of these steps needs to be completed before you move on to the next. Now, that first one in defining your why, it works both ways, your personal life and your business. This is a big one that people leave out. So many people try to tell, what is your why when it comes to your business, blah, blah, blah. The important thing to first understand is what is your why in your personal life? What gets you out of bed every single morning that drives your behavior to keep on going in life, all right? I want you to write down three things, three whys, that gets your butt out of bed every morning to do what you do, all right? Let me give you an example. As you may be wondering, all right, what's this guy talking about? I have hundreds of them, but it doesn't mean that you have to have hundreds of them, all right? Matter of fact, you can make the argument that hundreds of them only confuses the situation. So let me narrow it down, all right? One of my whys in, in, in life is that I believe that every individual has the ability to achieve prosperity. Now, what does prosperity mean? That's the beauty, is it means something different to everyone, all right? With me, it means that you can achieve financial freedom. It means that you can help many people out there. It means that you can become whatever you want to become. It means some other things, but those are really the top three things. That's prosperity uh, to me. Does it mean that has to be to you? Absolutely not but we're talking about my why right now. Every morning I drive myself out of bed because I want to help as many people in life achieve prosperity. The hourly employee, managers, doctors, entrepreneurs, as many people out there as possible, I want to help achieve prosperity, all right? That is something that gets me out of bed every single morning. This is one of my beliefs. It's one of my passions. And But it doesn't tell you what I actually do for a living. And that's the key with the why. You've heard it probably many times. Your why cannot tell how you do something and it cannot tell what you do. Very important. But I want you to start with that exercise of the three whys in your personal life that drives you to do what you do. All right. Now, once you start with the three whys in your personal life, then I want you to do your three whys in your business life. Only at that time do you do your three whys with your business life. This is not something that's taught with all the people out there throwing this why thing around. It's not something that's taught. There's very specific reasons why I want you to start with your whys personally before you start with your whys professionally. So I want you to have three. Now, for whatever reason, you can't come up with three. Start with one. Don't make it too hard or start with two. So start with one for your personal life, one then for your business life. Hopefully, you can come up with three for each. If you can't, don't think too much about it. Do one for each. That is defining your why. Remember, your why cannot discuss how you do it or what you do. All right. It just needs to be your why, such as I believe every individual 
can achieve prosperity. That's my why in my personal life. Now let's talk about my why in my professional life. And you'll be able to see how these intertwine well together. And that's one of the things that I want you to get out of this course today is the fact that your personal life and your business life are both going to be much better if your whys and both align with each other, all right? So as an example, my business why, so you have my personal why of I believe everybody can achieve prosperity. Now my business why is very similar in that I believe every business, regardless of how small you are, how big you are, or in between, regardless if you have a restaurant, dental practice, orthodontic practice, plastic surgeon's office, I believe every business, all of you listening out there, I believe every business can achieve prosperity. That is my why professionally. Now, what does prosperity mean? Again, it means something different to everybody, but to me, that means you can get your business on autopilot, meaning that you can do what you love most within your business. Clinicians listening out there, that's obviously being in the mouth treatment. I believe that you can get to a point where that's all you're doing because your business is operating on autopilot. Your employees are following systems. You're following systems. You've got your internal marketing working at high levels, digital marketing working at high levels, accountability, human resources, all the things that you need to run a successful business to get it to autopilot. I believe every single one of you out there, many of our clients have achieved this, but I believe every single one of you out there can get there through hard work and doing the things that other people won't. Because through that, you're going to get it to a point where it's on autopilot by doing the things that most people will not do. So my why is every business can achieve prosperity. My personal, every human being can achieve prosperity. And they work in harmony together. That's what I want you guys to find out there when you're discussing your why. The most successful entrepreneurs that I have put through this course in a multitude of professions... And it's not ironic. It's not a coincidence. The most successful ones, their why personally and their why professionally align up with one another. And the reason is, is they love what they do because their why coincides with their personal why. So when times get tough, they keep driving because their work is not work. My work with New Patient Group and helping others achieve prosperity having their business achieve prosperity is not work for me. See, the beauty is, is I get to wake up every day and what drives me personally also drives me professionally because the whys are very similar. So I love what I do. It fulfills me. It keeps me going. It gets me excited. I always tell people that I love growing other people's businesses and helping their personal life better than my own. To see you succeed and to see you Achieve the prosperity that I know you can. And that's how your business crush the competition while you working less than them, while you spending less on advertising than them. Every single day is a joyride for me because I get to bring the same why from my personal life into my business life. Now, where it becomes work, and that's why I want you to know what your why is personally and professionally, where it really becomes work is if your personal why is something completely different than your business why, then you're going to struggle in your business. And you're going to bring those business struggles back home into your personal life. See, that's the way this works. Whether it be arguing with spouses, whether it be arguing with kids, both. Because when you go to work, it's work. I don't want your work to be work. I want your work to be your passion that aligns with what your passion in life is as well. But I want to get the point across to everybody out there and the fact that what gets me out of bed every single morning in my personal life coincides with what gets me out of bed every single morning for my business. And why that's so important, you'll hear me talk about it more a little bit later on in the podcast. Why that's so important is the fact that the times are tough in your business when they get tough. If your passion in life is helping people like mine is, You keep working just as hard, if not harder, whenever you don't see the revenue coming in like you want it to. Or if your business isn't going financially exactly as planned. It's easy to keep going because your why is not about the money. It's about how many people can you help. 
We spend lots of time in my personal life helping people that are needy, helping people that can't afford to play a given sport. I have a charity company called Right Sports. It's dedicated to helping inner city kids. Uh, It doesn't have to be an inner city kid, but that's just normally what we end up helping the most who can't afford to play their sport of choice. Usually that sport of choice is baseball or even golf because they're two of the most expensive sports there is. So I spend a lot of time in my personal life doing the same thing I do in my business life because it's my why. It's a passion to help people. It's a passion to see them smile. It's a passion to see a needy kid get something that they otherwise couldn't afford so they could go out and hopefully achieve their dreams. You know, my dream is always maybe there's some kids that we're helping uh, that end up in professional baseball or on the PGA Tour or whatever sport of their choice that otherwise never would have had that chance if it wasn't for the charity uh, that we have in the ongoing giving back of helping people. But see, that same passion drives me over in work. All of our clients out there, you know how passionate we are. You know how passionate we are that teaching the doctors the things they need to know because the facts are healthcare consultants don't do it. And we are so passionate about getting the message to as many of you as possible because you need to learn the things that you to grow a business because of how competitive it is out there. And we're going to talk more of that. So that define your why I want you to do before you move on to step two. I want you to have at least one, ideally three for each, but at least one for your personal and your professional life. And I want them ideally to coincide, but don't do that just because I say it. I'm hoping that they coincide, but if they don't, that's one of the areas where I want you to contact us if they don't, because it is going to cause issues in your business at some point or in your personal life at some point or both. They need to coincide, especially because what we're going to move on to now is step two, and that is defining your passions. This is easier for most people as compared to step one. Not everybody, but most people can sit there and tell you what their passions are very easily. I have a passion for cooking. I have a passion for riding bikes, sports cars, traveling, whatever it may be. Usually people can just spit them out, boom, boom, boom. Unlike defining your why, that usually takes a little bit of a thought process. Here's the tricker. Here's the key. And this is why we're going through a very uh, seven steps. And for our clients out there, this is obviously when we take you through this and we work on it with you. It's much more in depth. All right. So you need to complete step one first. I cannot express the importance of that enough. Now, let me give you an example of my passions. All right. My passions, as an example, are helping, educating, teaching, coaching. Uh, My passion is to help business owners. Uh, It's to help employees and and a lot more. But obviously, for the sake of this podcast time, I'm not going to go into all my passions. I mean, my passions are cooking and things like that as well. But my passions, those things that I just read off to you, are not necessarily things that you have to do too. I want to emphasize, don't do it. And I see this. I'm not saying you guys are going to be this way, but I see this where you go to a course and you just feel like you have to be that person. Don't be that person. Be yourself. You're unique. You own your business. I don't own your business. You own your life. I don't own your life. So define your passions independent of your why, but do your why first. All right? Now, here's the key. And I'm going to allow you guys to reach out. Even our non-clients will allow you to reach out to me. All right? You need to type in MPG at newpatientgroup.com. That's the email address. And I need you to put seven steps to achieving prosperity podcast on it. For our clients, I want you to do this as well. Because you're about to find out something very important about the direction of your life whenever you do step two to find your passions. Because let me ask you a question. What if my passions were technology, television, computers, etc, etc, etc. And I definitely like those things. I like computers. I like technology. I like TV. But those are not my passions. But the question is, is what if they were? I would need to take a serious look in the mirror and ask myself if I'm doing the right things in life as those passions do not support my why. So the key with step two is when you define your passions for your personal and professional life, 
they need to align with your whys. Because if my whys, or I believe every person can achieve prosperity, and my why, just for reference point in my business life, is I believe every business can achieve prosperity. There are so many businesses that fail out there, and they fail for very specific reasons, very similar reasons, regardless of the profession they're in. So I believe that people can achieve prosperity, and I believe every business can achieve prosperity. So if I sit here and I say, look, my passions are technology, computers, TV, I need to take a look in the mirror and go, hey, you know what? My passions in life are not supported by my why, and my why does not support the passions. They're unaligned, and that is a problem. If you're a rep that goes in to help practices out there and your passions in life are sports cars, painting cars, engines, things like that, you get the point. That better align up with whatever your why is personally and professionally. Is it going to destroy your life? If not, no, of course not. But the point of this is, again, the seven steps to achieving prosperity. I'm taking you through a step-by-step course on how to get the most out of your life. And the moment you get to a step like this one right here, where you realize, "Uh uh-oh, things are not aligned properly in my life and or my business, that's where I want you to send. And clients out there, you can text me, obviously. But that's where I want you to send that MPG at newpatientgroup.com so we can help you. We can go through some things together. That's where the life coaching, business coaching really comes in. How do you get things from your passion standpoint aligned with your why? And it's also why I said that we have occasionally people that decide to change jobs. They they decide, you know what? I realize why my practice, my business is not succeeding at the levels it otherwise could. It's because this is not where my passion is. My passion is in a whole nother profession. So we've got defining your why and then step two, only you can do step two once you define step one, all right? Once the one's done, then you define your passions, which again is easier for most than others. The passions must align with your why if you expect to get the most out of your personal life and your business life. Now, once you've accomplished that and things are aligning properly, I want you to define your goals at that time like the top 1% does. And this is a problem for many people. Let me walk you through it. Now, a lot of people that have listened to podcasts about our employee performance indicators or how to define your goals and look at numbers differently. This is where a lot of that comes in. However, your goals, and this is where the top 1% does it differently among other things. Your goals that you define need to align with your passions and your why in life and your professional life. That's the key. Now, what I'm about to talk about is how the most successful entrepreneurs define their goals. And it is a secret very few people have really ever been taught. These are the type of things that school should teach, but school doesn't teach. And like I said, this is going to be the opposite of probably everything you have learned in your professional life, personal life for that matter. And therefore, and therefore it's a real challenge for most people. If you listen to a lot of so-called experts out there, they're going to tell you, you got to first define your goals. And it is a big mistake. It's a problem because your goals, in order for them to be obtainable at the highest levels, they've got to be based off of your whys and your passions. And without completing those first steps and having those first steps align with themselves, it significantly reduces the chances of your goals working the way they otherwise could work for you. Let me begin. Let me talk about how most people, most business owners, most entrepreneurs define their goals. I want to increase revenue. Boy, if we've heard this once, we've heard it a thousand times. I want to grow my production. I want to grow my collections, my new patients. I want revenues to go up. I want to increase my profit margins. I want to make another $400,000 this year. They define their terms in accordance to money or to what we call our employee performance indicators. And we teach people that four disciplines of execution book. Clients and avid podcast listeners, you know all about it. But if you're new, it's a book you should read. 
And they talk about this according to the league and lead and lag measures. Your goals cannot be defined according to lag measures because you can't control them. You can't control if you make another 400,000. It's out of your control. So they define their goals in terms of money and it's not the way to do it. We all want to make more money. I think anybody that says they don't is probably lying to you or to themselves or both. The problem with money goals is they do not align usually with the first two steps that I'm teaching you here and that you're hearing on this podcast. Money, an increase in profit, an increase in revenue, an increase in income, an increase in new patients, all of that is a result of everything else you're doing inside your business and inside your personal life or with your personal life. It's not a why and it's not a passion. So therefore, it should never be a goal. Money is a result of the things that you sometimes are likely not doing. Your goals that you define need to coincide with the whys you have defined and the passions you have defined that support your whys and vice versa. As an example, let me give you one. One of my goals every year is to learn at least five new ways to motivate based on psychology, based on the biology of the brain, science, is to be able to motivate people in a better, more improved way So they are able to better listen, basically interpret what I am talking to them about. So when I'm doing webinars, public speaking events, business coaching sessions, the podcast, whatever it might be, I'm continually improving myself in order to articulate this stuff to the avid fans out there in order for you to better go and achieve prosperity. You see how that works. My passions for educating, coaching, Producing content that's going to help you grow your business. All of those things align with my why of believing that every single individual in every single business can achieve prosperity when they do the right things. So my goals almost always coincide with making sure that I am able to articulate things better to you Maybe it's to create a new program, a new system with new patient group. And that's why we so heavily believe it's an ongoing partnership with our clients because our content will never stop. We'll always improve it. We'll always add new things. We'll always be coming up with new stuff because that's what we teach you to do. You can never rest on your laurels. You fall behind. You become a dinosaur almost overnight if you don't pay attention, especially with the rapid change of healthcare. And honestly, for our non-healthcare listeners out there, The consumer flat out has changed how they find your business, how they choose your business. It doesn't just matter to orthodontics or dentistry or plastic surgery. Doctors, I know, a lot of times you out there, you live in this healthcare bubble. So you somehow think that sometimes, you know, how people find you on the internet or how they choose to buy from you is somehow different than how they find a restaurant or how they decide to choose between a restaurant or how they decide to go back to that restaurant. It's all the same. It's all the same. That's why all of this applies to every type of business out there. It's not just you, it's any entrepreneur out there. They face the same challenges. Now by accomplishing, like I was talking about, by accomplishing the goal I have on a year in year out basis, I become better at my passion, coaching, teaching, educating, public speaking, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I have achieved my goal year in and year out. Now, you know what the result of that is? New patient group generates more clientele. We generate more revenue. We generate more referrals. But that's never the goal. I get more of a joy watching you grow your business, watching you change, watching you implement, watching you innovate. I get more of a pleasure than that than seeing my own company do it. I know, and I've made plenty of money in my life. I know that that's all going to come by focusing on the right things, but the goals have to revolve around your passions and your why because you've got to constantly be improving those things. And that's why every 
you know, consultant out there that just, ah, you got to define your why. The problem with that, like I said, is, is it doesn't do anything for you unless you then know what to do afterwards. That is why in this podcast today, there's been people all over the world take it and it's changed their life. The challenge though, is you actually going and actually doing these steps. Because now you're in a situation where a step one doesn't align with two, you got to stop. And until you figure that out, you can't keep going. Once two comes in, it better darn well align with three. And each one of these, so step one and two's got to align with three. Once we're about to go to step four, one, two, and three have to align with four. And until it does, you need to stop and figure things out. Once you define your goals, and remember, you've got your whys, your passion must align with your whys. Once you have your passions aligned with your whys, then you've got to define your goals to consistently get better at your passions. That's what it's all about. On a consistent year in and year out basis. And your business is going to be fine if you think this way. You get so many people waste their money on postcards and pay-per-click and all of this stuff. It's not needed. This is the type of stuff that's needed. And the beauty of this is once you do this type of stuff, whenever you decide to go out and do outside marketing and advertising, if you choose to, your return on it is going to be so significantly higher. The return on everything else you do only goes up. But yes, it's work. And that's the challenge. It's easy to pay somebody for a postcard. It's difficult to constantly be looking to improve yourself and your team. That's difficult. But it's also why the internal marketing, which is another form of it, it's why it produces a bigger return than anything else you can do. Because anything worth it in life takes work. It takes consistency, accountability, and it takes time. It takes time. So we've got our whys. Everybody achieving prosperity. Businesses can achieve prosperity. We have our passions, coaching, educating, teaching, speaking, doing everything we can to improve people. Now we've got our goals. And this is, of course, was just one goal, but of becoming better on a year in and year out basis and learning new ways every single year to be a better speaker, to be a better educator, to be a better coacher. I don't know if coacher is the right word. I think it's just coach. (laughs) But you get the point. It's all of those things. And they all align, which means now you're moving on to actually defining your goals. Now you're being specific with it. Now you can only be specific with it once you are defining and learning how to define your goals like the top 1% on how to do your passions and how to get your passions aligned with your why. And I cannot emphasize it enough, guys. If your passions are way off from your why, you have issues. Again, does it mean you're going to go out of business? No. No. But it guarantees that you're not going to be as happy in life and happy with your business forever, no matter how much money you make. And it also guarantees that you will lose money via lost opportunities, probably millions throughout your career, by not having them aligned. Also, if you don't have them aligned, and this is a problem why a lot of businesses don't stick with it, because the second the money doesn't come in, you quit or you get depressed or you stop doing the things necessary to continually grow your business. And that is a problem. It's a problem. If you have everything aligned, why, passions, understanding the goals of the top 1%, and then defining your goals, when times get tough and maybe the money isn't there, you still stick to doing the right things. You don't look at the money. You realize that you're going to continue to do the right things because you're passionate about it. You believe in it. And therefore, if you consistently do the right things and have the right mindset, the money's going to come. But you, again, you can't control the money. So the money may not come for three years. It may come in six months. It may come tomorrow. You can't control it. And no matter how good anybody is at growing a business, money cannot be controlled. These are the things that you can control and improve consistently. So now that you've been taught how the most successful entrepreneurs define their goals, now I want you to do it. And remember, your goals cannot be money related. And why each one of these steps is so important. Now your goals also must be obtainable and they must be realistic. This drives me nuts. I I hear doctors. Now, first of all, it can't be money related, but I'm going to give you an example of what we hear. 
And we hear this stuff. Oh, I'm a, I want to this year, I want to become a millionaire. That's what I want to do. You know, we just made 50,000 last year. This year, I want to become a millionaire. So you sit there and you're going to go, oh, okay. You're going to become a millionaire this year and you practiced at 50,000 last year. Now, I'm, it's an exaggerated example. I want to give you guys a point. One, that's the issue with a money goal. But the other issue is, is they've got to be realistic. However you're doing your goals now, if it's a production goal, which it shouldn't be, but if it is, you can't do this thing where last year you produced a million as a practice. This year you want to produce 1.8. Can it happen? Of course. Heck, we see our clients do it. But come on, be realistic. All right? Put a 12% growth goal on there. Put a double digit on there. Let it be obtainable is really just the point. Now, at the same time, you're define, when you define your goals, they do need to be difficult to obtain. They can't just be easy. They've got to be difficult, but also realistic. You know, something like, like if you look at mine on taking courses and learning from other experts on how to improve coaching, educating, etc. I can't wait. I can't go into the year and say, you know what? I'm going to take 300 courses this year on how to get better. Now that's difficult, but it's also not obtainable. It's not realistic. So you define your goals in a way that correlate with the why, with the passions, understanding how to define them. Now you're defining them. They've got to be obtainable and difficult. Let me give you some examples of mine. I want to learn five new skill sets to improve the customer service at my business. That's an example you could do as well. You call them patients. I call them cut, whatever. This year, you and your team can learn five new skill sets to improve the patient experience. That is obtainable. It's not easy. I want to learn how to teach my waiters five new verbiage skills to better educate the tables on our wine menu. See, that is how the most successful restaurants do it. But see, it, it applies no matter what type of business you are. I want to learn five new ways my hygienist can better educate patients about the long-term effects of gum disease. That is a goal. That's obtainable. Now, once you achieve the goal, you've got to practice it so the hygienist can articulate it right, but you guys get the point. This is how I want you thinking with your business. I want to take five courses to learn how to better motivate myself and my employees. You're the CEO of the organization. You're the innovator. You're the motivator. Now, unfortunately, a lot of doctors don't look at it that way, but the reality of the situation is you are the CEO that happens to be a clinician. You are not a clinician that happens to be a CEO. Five years ago, 10 years ago, the mentality worked fine. It doesn't work fine anymore. Some people understand that. Others, it's going to take them becoming a dinosaur to finally understand them running a successful business has never been more important and it's only going to become more and more important every single day moving forward. There's nothing you can do about it. That's what competition does. So if you don't like that, you should go work for somebody else, be an associate. But if you own your own practice, you better darn well become an entrepreneur and learn the ways of the top 1%. Because the reality is you must run a real business. You must do it. I want to help change the lives for the better of at least five individuals. That's something I do every year in my personal life uh, and my professional life. I mean, that, that's an easy one for us because we help individuals grow their business. So it's inevitable that we're going to help five or more. But I, for that particular one, I do that in my personal life because, again, it correlates back with passions and my why if I believe everyone can achieve prosperity. So if I'm not helping at least five people a year in my personal life, which is obtainable. It's not easy, but it's obtainable. I want to improve their lives. It could be teaching them the right skill set on how to make more money. Whatever it might be, I want to improve their lives. Now, you're through step four, defining your goals. You guys got to go out and define your goals, but you can't do it. This is a step-by-step -step process. You can't do it until you're able to accomplish what we've talked about in step one through three. Now, step five, define your action plan. All right, now this step defines, it really involves defining your plan of action to help you better achieve the goals that you're defining in step four. All right, it can't just be, okay, here are my three or four goals, let's go do it. You've got to have some kind of action plan. It doesn't need to be rocket science. It doesn't need you to take you three years to complete it. 
Now this does take some work and also is why the vast majority of people won't even finish this step seven steps to, uh, to achieving prosperity. And I advise you don't be one of those people. If you think you're going to magically grow your business overnight by not putting in the work, if any company ever tells you that, run as fast as you possibly can. For our non-avid listeners, this could be the first one you've ever listened to. Our clients at New Patient Group, I named the company that for different reasons, but the word group is in there for one, is that we are a group of like-minded people that think very differently about how to grow a business. It just happens to be a practice. And our clients are obsessed with learning this stuff. That's what makes them different. It's also what makes them crush their competition while spending much less money in the process. I love, I love to hear the results of our clients grow their practice, grow their business, while spending less. And the guy down the street spending 5000 a month on pay-per-click. They're doing radio. They're doing billboards. Meanwhile, our clients don't do any of it, and they destroy their competition. I love it. And one, it's other things as well, but one of the reasons is this type of stuff. They're constantly in our practice virtual platform, constantly in it with courses like this. And these courses are great for your employees. They're great for you to listen to and press play in front of your people. Do them together. Builds the culture. It adds responsibility for your hourly employees. These are the things your hourly employees can control. These are the type of things you should bonus your people on. Put them through the course. Make them report in every week. I want you to go through a new step and I want you to present it in front of the team. And when they do and they get through the course, give them a bonus. See, that's something they can control. Bonusing on production and collections, and I keep saying we have a podcast coming, guys. We have long lists of podcasts. So it is on the way on how to bonus your people and think differently about it. Because bonusing them on production collections you've heard me talk about is not the way to do it. It's boring. It doesn't improve behavior. It's not going to grow your business. This type stuff grows your business while reducing the need for outside advertising. So don't be one of these people that all got to put in some work here. Welcome to real life living in a competitive industry. You think dentistry is competitive? You think orthodontics is competitive? Imagine having a consulting company that helps practices. There's thousands of them out there. You don't think that takes an insane amount of work? So welcome to a competitive marketplace. Welcome to running a real business. It's the way of life and it will always be that way moving forward because it's only going to become more competitive. And you've got the scarcity of the DSO, the corporations, the Smile Direct clubs out there. So much is changing. Now, a mistake made by many is thinking about this step and analyzing it way too much. The defining your action plan. All right, what happens at this point is what I'll discuss in number is step number seven of achieving prosperity. And those who are clients out there, those who've seen me keynote speak, you know I talk about implementation a lot. And that's what step seven is going to be. I'm going to give you a simplified action plan right now that's going to ensure uh, that you're going to be able to better accomplish uh, what we're discussing early in the course. Okay, ensure that I accomplish. I want you to accomplish your goals. All right, this is going to help you do so. Now, one of the, my defined goals, as I told you, was about how I wanted to learn at least five new ways to motivate based on the biology of the brain so people are better able to listen, interpret the things I'm saying when I'm doing webinars, speaking, business coaching, etc. Now, I need to define my plan of action to ensure I accomplish this goal. So I'm going to teach you how I do it. So one, I'm going to locate three companies and or individuals that specialize in what I want to learn. Now, I will locate these companies using Google search on or before January 5th, all right? So I have going into the year, starting January 1st, and I may start this earlier, but the point is by January 5th of every year, I have identified those companies that I want to learn from. I have contacted them as well, all right? Because that's what step two is, is I'm going to contact each of these companies or individuals, and I want to make a decision that I'll believe will help accomplish my goal of becoming a better speaker, messenger, etc. coach. Now I'm going to do that by contacting them. And then I'm going to have a decision officially made on which company and or individual, or it may be multiple of them that I want to move forward with by January 15th. All right. That's all defined. And it's simple. All you do is put it on your calendar. 
Assign a task to yourself. Guys, using our practice virtual platform out there, like we all talk about, and I know you love it, but fully use that task manager for yourself. We know we have employees and management using it to, to, to assign things to you by a due date, vice versa. Use it for yourself. Man, I use that thing all the time. And this is an example of it. In the platform, I'm going to assign myself a task, these three, and I'm going to know if I'm on topic or not, or on, on task or not. So define your action plan, but don't make it rocket science. All right. So again, I'm going to locate these companies or individuals that I want to help me on Google before January 5th or on or before January 5th. I'm then going to come, I'm going to contact these people and I'm going to then make a decision which one I'm moving forward with by January 15th of every year. Simple. Define your action plan. That's going to help you accomplish this stuff. Now, step six, step six is a big one, guys. This one is difficult for many people as it involves removing certain people, employees, et cetera, from your life. Many times I believe the Lord above handles this kind of on your behalf as you go through this. And I'm going to give you an example here momentarily in my personal life on how this works. And Many times you'll figure this out on your own. After you go through the seven steps, you're going to realize there are people in your life and there are employees in your life that are keeping you from achieving the things that you are going through on a step-by-step basis. Now, this is also in your personal life. Again, remember, employees. This is not something we're teaching management to go through to fire you. All right? Employees, this is if you want to achieve the most you can achieve in life, pay increase, better life, better work life, etc. This is for you too to realize that there are people probably that you're hanging out with in your personal life that you need not to hang out with. There's constant studies that show you you're a result of the three people you hang out with most in your life. As an example, if you hang out with five millionaires, you are likely to become the sixth. If you're already a millionaire and you hang out with ones that are billionaires, it's not likely you're going to become a billionaire. Let's be realistic about it. But I just want to make the analogy and the point. You are who you hang out with. Period. End of story. If you hang out with five people that are broke in their personal life, you are likely to be broke yourself. If you hang out with five positive thinking, hardworking individuals, you are likely to be the sixth. You yourself are likely to be that way. If same way, if you hang out with negative people with poor work ethic, you are going to become the sixth. You get my point. By no means am I telling you to get rid of friends, employees, just because they might not be rich. So please don't take the, the above 100% literal. However, I do very much want you to understand the meaning of the above is really to analyze the people you're interacting with daily, both in your personal and your business life. I used to have this friend's name was Ronnie. Loved him to death. He was my best friend for years. But there are so many things. And this is how I say a lot of times it's funny when you go through this process, God will just organically handle things for you. It's almost kind of strange how it works. He was a guy in my single life. I had very successful companies, was traveling the world, was living a really fun life, helping a lot of people, uh, he was an air marshal. We used to do all kinds of things together. You know, we would stay out late, party hard, blah, blah, blah. And I've always been the type of guy that can party hard. It doesn't affect my, my work life, my personal life. So one day I meet my, what is now my wife. Ronnie's a guy, he was, you know, he, ugh, he's in his late 40s now, probably 48, 48, 49. I, I'm 40. So he was always, you know, quite a bit older than I was. But he would live his life like he was 20 which was great for me at the time because that's how kind of I was doing it. But one day when I met my, what's now my wife, Ronnie was constantly putting things in my mind about how I should, well, get rid of her. Ah, you don't want to tie yourself down and blah, blah, blah. And one day God just kind of told me, you know what? He's somebody that you need to take out of your life. Not because you don't like him, not because you don't love him, but he is going to hold you back from the things that you want to accomplish based on your passions, your why, all the things that we're talking about today, guys. And he's certainly going to affect negatively your relationship with Kristen. And I made the decision 
to cut him out of my life as much as it hurt. So this is not supposed to be something where we get rid of people and be happy about it. These are the tough decisions that people need to make in their personal and or their business life in order to achieve and maximize their why, their passions, their goals, etc. I do want you to understand everything I'm talking about and really an- analyze the people you are hanging out with. Do they support your why of everybody can achieve prosperity? Every business can in this case. Do they support that? Do they support your passions? It doesn't mean that they have to like them, but do they detract from you being better at them is probably a better way for me to say it. And if the answer is yes, they need to not be in your life. Your life is going to be better with people that support you and your drive and your initiatives, your passions, your whys, both in your personal life and your business. Gossipers, negative thinkers, the people who say, I call it the, I call it the loser mentality, that I don't have time to do that stuff. Surrounding yourself in your personal life with that or surrounding yourself with employees that think that way is going to affect negatively the things that we are talking about step one through step five. So now you have all of that defined and you are now looking at defining your crowd. I want you to take a piece of paper. I want you to define it in two columns. We've talked about this before. I want you to write down all the people you know in your personal life on the left side that actually detract from you accomplishing what your why and your passions are and your goals behind it. On the right side, I want you to do that with all of your employees. You should not list one employee on that list. If you do, you need to make the difficult decision of finding somebody new at your organization. Employees listening. If you have people in your personal life that are negative thinkers, they're broke, they don't have a good work ethic. And again, it doesn't mean that they're bad people. That's not what I'm saying. Oh, Brian, they don't have money. They're bad. That's not what I'm saying. My point is, is that they are absolutely detracting from you accomplishing what you otherwise could. That's the point. So you need to make the tough decision to surround yourself with people that you would like to become. Easier said than done. I get it. This is not about firing people, doctors out there, but it is about making the tough decisions, which may entail having to remove an employee or employees from your organization. So again, this goes personally and professionally. Define your crowd. Which takes us to step seven. This is a big one. And honestly, this is the biggest challenge for us all. You guys have heard me talk about it. And it's implementation without procrastination. How many of you get back from an event that you spent your hard-earned money at and you say, look, we love five things. It's implemented. I'm going to hold everybody accountable and myself of implementing it immediately. We're going to work on it on a consistent basis to make sure it doesn't go backwards. And I am not going to allow any excuses to not let this become our way of life. How many of you guys do that when you get back from an event? And I know you're shaking your head, kind of chuckling, as you know I'm right. Not many of you do it. So in this, if you are one of the people that have actually made it to step seven, congratulations. Because remember, just listening to this podcast is going to do nothing for you. You going and actually doing this, that is what's going to get you somewhere. If you guys want this PowerPoint, by the way, just mpg at newpatientgroup.com and just ask, hey, listen, I listened to this podcast and I would like the PowerPoint. And what I highly recommend you do is get our practice virtual platform. Just put in H as in Harry, S as in Sam. Just put in HS practice virtual as the code and get the discount on it and get the practice virtual platform because you're going to have this and all other kinds of things that you can dive into with you and your team. It's a small investment for the return it's going to bring on your life and your business and your employees. But I want to warn you, like I said, congratulations if you've actually legitimately gone through this now. I am saying congratulations to those that after this podcast actually go and do this step by step. It could take you a couple months. It might take you a few may take you a few days. Get it right. 
But I also want to warn you about something very important. The majority of people that actually get to this step do exactly what the step says not to do. They procrastinate. And that is one of the biggest differences between the masses and the top 1% is implementing without procrastination, whatever it is. To achieve prosperity, you've got to implement first and figure it out later. It's so different. Most people try to figure it out and until they do, they, they don't implement it. Well, it could take you forever to implement it. And I've got news for you. You think you've got it figured out? Trust me, you don't. Because the second you implement it, you're going to have issues. That's why business plans and mission statements, the things that business school teaches you, are not reality. It's just the reality, no pun intended, of the situation, that those things are not reality. What you need to do is if you have an idea, go test it. See if there's a market for it. Figure out the disaster it causes and fix the disaster and then you'll, you'll implement it well. Too many people have the I'll get it done tomorrow mentality. And then when tomorrow comes, they don't do it because something comes up that says, well, you know, well, this came up. I'm going to make the excuse. So now I'm going to try to do this tomorrow. And I call it the tomorrow domino effect because it just keeps rolling. Tomorrow, something else is going to pop up. It's going to keep you from doing it. Then something else, blah, 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 blah. So I urge you when you get to this step, you've put in all the work to get to this step. Don't cheat legitimately go step by step to then do it. If you've identified three people that absolutely are holding you back from advancing your career, advancing your personal life, make the tough choice to not hang out with them anymore effective immediately. As an example, all of these, if you've defined your why and you truly have it, then move to step two and accomplish it. Don't wait till tomorrow. Assign yourself tasks. Look, I want each step done a week at a time so that way in seven weeks, I'm done, man. And implement it. Define your why. One to three for your personal life, one to three for your business. And they need to coincide. They've got to coincide, man. You've got to have whys that coincide with each other because the passions have to coincide with your whys. They've got to be how to improve your life, how to improve your business. Learn how to define your goals like the top 1%. Eliminate money from your mind. Eliminate lag measures. If you haven't seen that podcast, go back and listen to, it's something called you know what the, the missed opportunities or the lost opportunities, the scary numbers that you need to know. That one, I think the one prior to that one talks about the lead versus the lag. Important that you listen to that. Define your goals. After you learn how the top 1% does it, then step forward, define them like the top 1%. Make sure that those goals are going to help you improve your passions and your why. Then define your action plan. How are you going to make this happen? How are you going to hold yourself and your team accountable? Then define your crowd. Make sure the people that are in your life and in your business are help enhancing your whys, your passions, your goals. Don't let people, don't let, I, I tell doctors this all the time and employees, this is not to criticize you. But I always tell management teams, we're a company that is looking at you three to five years down the road. If you can't see that, then you're not gonna understand a lot of the things we do. Now, by looking three or five years down the road, what inevitably happens a lot of times is huge first and second year growth. But the point is, is that's not our goal. Our goal is to set you up for life. Do all the hard things now to where it pays off later. If it pays off sooner, great, but that's not the idea. So my point here is, is that anybody that's working for you, that's small, close-minded in terms of business, marketing, consumerism, customer service, things like that, they will absolutely detract from the seven steps of achieving prosperity working for you. You will have to make the tough decision. Don't let small-minded people run your business. It's your dream. You came out of school in debt for it. They don't run your business. You do. Make the tough choice. And then implementation without procrastination. So important. You've gone through this. Now do it. Do it. 
And this seven steps to achieving prosperity will help improve your life and your business if you do. Thanks for listening, guys. A lot of more great podcasts upcoming. Hope you enjoyed today. Bye, everybody.